Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about a card that I am looking to pick up. I currently own one copy of this card, but as of this video, I am currently picking up them up as we speak. So I like the card a lot. It sees play modern. I don't believe it's strong enough in legacy, but in modern, it's very good. It does compete for, for a spot with Liliana of the Veil, vale, but in some decks, this card is actually just straight up better. Her plus one is incredible. Consistent creature removal while plusing is something that we haven't really seen, especially for one double black. On top of that, she does have a home in the number one deck or one of the number one decks, Death Shadow. And that home is a very, very comfortable home given some of the stuff Wizards of the Coast has said about not interacting with the ban list. If Wizard of the Coast does not interact with the ban list for Modern, Death Shadow will still be a tier 1 deck. That is the only danger I see where she falls out of favor and is not in a good deck because the deck is banned or some component of the deck is banned making the entire deck unplayable. Okay, so what is the price point currently? We're looking at the San Diego Comic Con foil which is around $68, I actually prefer this card. This version of her, I think 68 is not too bad. I do feel like during Christmas time, she'll drop around 50. Cards hit all time lows, single cards hit all time lows during Christmas time for many reasons. Reason one, people need better 2017 uh, finances. They wanted to show that they made profit on the books. Reason two, they're trying to buy the new product that's going to happen in 2018, so they need cash flow. Reason three, people just need money to buy gifts. So you're looking at stores putting this on discount possibly, but the real deal is buying this stuff from individuals. I have a lot of luck during Christmas time buying collections for way below what they would cost in let's say March, right? And here's the catch, here's the interesting part for me, which is not so some of the stuff that I, why I like this card may not apply to you. Um, one of the big components for me is I'm going to GP Houston in January. And GP Houston January should have a lot of this card. Because why would it not? Um, it, I, don't, I think GP Houston uh, is not modern. I'm pretty sure it's not modern. I would imagine it's sealed because it's always sealed in Houston. Or maybe draft or something like that maybe standard but this card should be incredibly cheap during that time period which gives me the window so rotate it out very cheap i should be able to pick up a lot of them now obviously i am telling you my plan so if you're a vendor maybe you don't want to do that and you charge me a little bit more but i'm sure one of those vendors at gb houston will be willing to sell me these for dirt cheap because uh, they need new inventory. I mean, cash flow is king. Cash, there is not a better trade you can make than cash. Everyone needs cash. Everyone likes cash. Now, would I trade for this version in foil? Yes, I'm going to trade for as many of them as I can get and just hold them. Uh, hold them and hope, hope to God they're not reprinted, right? So that's my plan. Do you agree with my plan? Do you disagree with my plan? It doesn't really matter. My plan is not to order. Like, unless I see a really good sale, I'm not going to buy them online. I'm just going to go to every vendor booth. Well, I'm going to show, sell my cards, right? So I have money. Then I'm going to go into every vendor booth and say like, hey, do you have this? And then at that point, whatever the price is, which will probably be, I think, 20, maybe 22. I'll say, okay, so I want this card for 20 bucks. And how many do you have? Oh, you have 18? Okay, here's 360 bucks. And I'll go home and that will be that. So that's my plan. I plan to buy, mm, I'm hoping to get at least 50 copies of it. Uh, 50 copies of it would probably cost, I'm hoping I can get 50 copies of the normal one for about $20 a copy. So it's a thousand bucks or under. I'm hoping it's not 20 bucks. I think if it's 15, that would be like a super buy. It's still going to drop. This card is still going to drop. It's going to drop during Christmas time. I'm hoping it doesn't tick up 
and it shouldn't take off because GP Houston, I know it's not modern. I looked into it. Now, it would look kind of silly if GP Houston was modern. I should probably double check. But when I was looking into like what cards I should buy, I'm pretty sure this is GP Houston 2018 is... It's never been modern. It's always been like some random standard event. Let's see. Houston, USA, George Brown Center, January 26th to 28th. Oh, nice, nice. It is limited, which I believe is draft. Yes. Okay. Type, type, type. So-called required for me limited. Yeah, so it's either sealed or draft. Probably both, actually. So it's sealed into draft, which explains why it's so expensive. So, all these stars are aligned for me personally. Again, this might not be the best advice for you guys, but for me personally, the stars have aligned. GP Houston's coming in January 26th to 28th. I'm going to probably make offers on the 28th. This card should be at an all-time low around GP Houston, and I should be able to pick them up easily for $20, hopefully for under like 18 or 15 uh, and I'm going to pick up about $1,000 of these at the convention. If you are a vendor, do not raise your price because of this video. Because I will be the only customer you have. And there's plenty of vendors out there. I mean, unless you guys like, I mean, that would be terrible. But I know, I can already send emails to these people. Um, to I can actually send an email to a store that's going to be at GP Houston and tell them, hey, from now on, I want you to pick up all these uh, lilies. I like the lily. I think it's a beautiful piece of artwork. I think it's very strong, and it, it's in a top modern deck. That they said or is not. They said modern is not going to have a ban and unban. It's not going to be the dynamic banning and unbanning that it has been in the past, which gives stability, which is good for players. I think modern modern's got to be the future of Magic. I cannot imagine its legacy because legacy is. As I always said, and now people comment, like, no, Legacy is growing. Look at all these new dual lands that are coming into the system. There is a set amount of people who can play Legacy given the reserve list. It cannot grow beyond a point. And if it's at that point, right? It's at that point. Modern is the ultimate equalizer because everything will be reprinted. It's just a matter of when Lily of the Last Hope will be reprinted. I'm hoping... It's a unique enough card. Uh, it's a, going to be a chase card eventually. But before it becomes reprinted in a chase set, like Modern Masters 2019, perhaps, I'm hoping it gets over 100. Uh, I think it could get there. Uh, very few cards I look at today, and I say to myself, huh, that card could be over 100. Because uh, just given the print run, Eldric Moon is the perfect, perfect set. A set that was not opened by many people, a set that was not super popular. Uh, the block, the whole block was not super popular because it was in between the Battle for Zendikar, which people opened cases of, which they should not have, and the Amaket, which again had the masterpieces. So it was like masterpieces, no masterpieces, now more masterpieces. You know, I, I think everything is aligned for me to buy this card at GP Houston. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.